Greetings friends! Just last week we started these plants, these starts here, from seed. And uh, a number of them are starting to grow pretty well. And a number of you asked when we did that video, how do we water our starts, our seeds, when we put them in our trays here in our grow room? Well, one way is we use humidity domes. And I really like using them because they really help keep warmth in for the starts that need warmth and it can also keep some moisture in there as well. However, you do want to be watchful to make sure that there's not getting too much moisture and too much humidity in there, so that's something to keep out for. But we also water, take them right outside, as Sayla was just doing, and I got another tray I'm gonna hand her here, and we'll water some on the outside. So right now I'm just doing a test with some of them to see which one I'm liking better, whether it be the humidity dome or just water them directly outside. And these trays right here are ones in which we didn't use humidity domes on. And, and as you can see, the soil is just drier there. So we're going to do some overhead watering of these. And then I'll probably put humidity domes on these as well. Just to cut down on the work. Because when you have the temperature as warm as it, as it is in there, it, it tends to dry out pretty quickly. And we're almost watering every day. And just really watching to make sure that they don't really dry out. Because that will kill your starch. You want to make sure that... They, are, they don't have too much moisture, but they need the right amount for them to, especially when they are trying to germinate and to sprout up and grow. So, these need water. Let's get them water. Hey, Micah, will you turn on the water for me? Yep. Is it on? Yeah. All right, thank you. Sometimes I use mist overhead, and then sometimes I'll just fan it, but it all depends. Want to be careful that you're not pounding the plants down in little starts. They're just little babies. You don't want to pound them down too hard. All right, so once we water them, next we take them right back into the grow room under their lights. Especially now that they're still young, we wait until they develop their true leaves. And then we'll transition them out into our main greenhouse. I'm a huge fan of these humidity domes. We get the trays and the plugs and the humidity domes from Bootstrap Farmer. And uh, they are great, real sturdy. A lot better than some of these cheapos that you get at a local hardware store. These are much better. Last one. I'm super excited about these because these are from are some seeds, tomato seeds that we got from our friends Joel and Teresa Salton. Teresa gave Lacey these seeds and they have sprouted and they're looking pretty good there and hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some of those tomatoes like she gave us to taste when we were there and they were just absolutely fantastic. You can tell I'm pretty excited about that. Well, that's that. You know what guys? I am planning to do another shelf in here. We wanted to really grow more food this year. Each year we want to build upon the previous year and I want to grow more. So I'm thinking about doing another shelf on this side and I'll have to do some cleaning up, things like that. But um, these are just regular shop lights, T8 shop lights. I want to do another shelf on the other side where we can start some more plants. And I'm thinking of trying T5 LED lights. One of the things with the T8 bulbs is some plants, like your peppers and sometimes tomatoes, they don't grow quite as fast. They'll still grow, but you put them under some other light and they'll grow even faster. That's one of the things that I'm planning to do. Well, we got some more things to do out here. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just feel like we're getting a late start and there's just distractions and it just robs me of my energy so today we're getting a little bit later start than i would like to have gotten so uh trying to just get that energy off and get things cranking uh but uh we got some more things to water in our greenhouse all right even though it's still winter time we're still been growing things over the past few months 
outside in the main part of the market garden as well as right here and in our greenhouse as you can see right in here we have a number of things growing just a couple things actually uh, we have some cilantro growing and then some other greens here in the, our bed that we have here here we have different kind of pepper, peppermint that's not growing really really well but um turn that on a little bit more it is growing and i have been harvesting from it making some nice teas which are my, some of my favorites here we have some lemon balm that I transplanted and I've uh, been thinning them out so hopefully we'll have even more of those plants this year. Another great tea to have. And that's lemon balm is a really good one for calming and anxiety. And this is a wild lemon right here I'm trying to save. So uh, let's have the tea. One of the plants Daddy didn't mention we have growing in here is dead nettle, and it grows wild, and it just kind of took over this bed almost. It's like everywhere, and it's actually edible. See? Like it? I can't tell yet. <laughs> Doesn't taste bad. And it's not one of my favorite foods either. <laughs> but it is kind of furry. How did it taste? It tastes furry and it gets stuck in your throat and it feels weird. <laughs> well, one of the things that Sailor forgot to tell you is that it really tastes a lot better if you cook it first, so it's not as furry. <laughs> but kids, don't just go out eating stuff because I'm just eating stuff. I know what I'm eating. And if you go out and eat something you really don't know what it is, you can get sick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just make sure you remember that it, the ones you need to cook too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you eat? Bed nettle. Need some water? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so what's next? Let's see here, there's a lot of things on the to-do list. So between my list being full and uh, getting a little bit later start than I would like to have, it's just kind of like, oh, I'm just at a friend's day. Uh, what about you guys? Do you go through that kind of thing when you just feel like things and distractions and hindrances get you off from doing what you're supposed to do and then you already have this long list of things that you want to do and you just kind of just like, boom, like you're just going to explode, like steam coming out. So that's how I feel right now. But still got stuff to do. All right, so in here in the greenhouse, uh, there's a number of things that we want to do as far as going forward projects. I mentioned in the previous video that we're going to be doing some gravel in here, so don't have that quite yet. And we're going to be building a raised bed here in the middle with some, a deep raised bed, so hopefully we can get some real big root crops as well as some other things that grow up here. But um, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Speaking of that project, what we should probably start doing is I'm going to need more block to make the raised beds in. So we need to start setting up for that project. Probably a good idea right now to start setting up for a number of projects. So that way we start having the items that we need. So on the day of the project, we're not having to scramble around to try to gather those items. So I think what we'll do is <laughs> see if Sayla has recovered and then she can help me transport some of the block. Uh, maybe right, right outside the greenhouse here, or right nearby so we can easily start placing the block in here. Uh, as we get our gravel and start making progress just kind of in unison together on the day that we do that project. So uh, get some block. All right, so you had to get some water? Yeah. All right, you doing better? Yep. All right, so if I could have you drive the lawn tractor for me, we're gonna get some block.
Alrighty, so here's the block that we're gonna be using. And because my father-in-law has worked in masonry construction for years, pretty much his whole life, even since he was younger than, than you, there's been this block that he stacked here, excess block, and uh, for, they've been stacked here, I don't know how long, actually we probably should ask him for, on some of these, how long that they have actually been here. But uh, it's, it's a blessing that he allows us to use them. So we're gonna be using them to actually grow food. So they're just sitting here and why we'll not use them to, in some capacity, to produce. So that's what we're doing. Uh. So I made the stack a little bit high, so hopefully that will reduce our trips. But uh, I'm just right here spotting here to make sure nothing falls off. Hopefully that. Hopefully I don't fall out here. Or it doesn't fall on top of me. <laughs> Doing good. Doing a good job. These blocks right here are gonna help us as we're setting up our bed right here in the middle here. So over the last seven years or so that we've been here, we've just been gradually trying to make progress. We started with a greenhouse that we got from Harbor Freight, and then from there we've just gradually been trying to make progress in, in our systems and the things that we grow in. And eventually it'd be neat to have like a, a, a mass rocket heater in here to keep the thing keep the greenhouse warm right now we don't have a heat source in here but that might be something we'd like to try as well as well as i've been gradually working on putting some drip tape in here as well so i won't have to water so that's something we want to do we want to catch harvest the rain water set up a gutter here to drain it right into a rain barrel for drip irrigation so just a number of things that we've got to do so anyways the day is getting away from us and uh we're actually there's some rain in the forecast and we have some stuff growing out in the main market garden that are in low tunnels and uh, they haven't been watered in a while so we're going to uncover those and uh, let them get some water. Hey daddy, since it's our seventh year here, will we do the land rest? That's a good question. Did you ask that one all by yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well actually when we first came here we really didn't grow anything so technically it won't be our seventh year of growing even though we'll have been here on the land seven years. But um, that is a good question. I do plan to do a land Sabbath for our, our farm. Uh, never done it before. If any of you have done it, let me know. I'm look open to some tips. I actually would like to journal when we do it. So uh, next year, I believe, we'll look at it exactly. But that should be when our seventh year of growing would be. And uh, how all the ins and outs and the small details of how to do it, I don't know exactly. Um, but I do plan to do like some trials and let sections of the garden have a different rest than others but uh, i do plan to implement that excellent question there sailor <laughs> all right all right let's go ahead and let's see how it feels in here the thing looks like oh man feel the heat coming out here <laughs> wow it's like a jungle yeah we got our lettuce growing what's that right here chickweed yep there we go, and that's good for adding some nutrients back into the soil. 
And we've got our lettuce here, as well as a few unwanted. We'll get those out of there. But uh, we need to be harvesting some of this. We need to harvest me some salad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow, it's crazy how it feels like a whole different place here. It feels and like looks. a subtropical environment here. All right, well, let's get these uncovered. So, we have this low tunnel here, that one down there, which probably isn't that great because, uh, yeah, just look at it. <laughs> and some other ones down there. We've had a lot of wind here lately. I'm, I'm glad that these stayed on here, but the wind has blown so much. It's actually blown our landscape fabric, it's blown them off even with the bend pin down it's blowing them around so we got some cleaning up to do but we'll get to that first we need to get these uncovered you know it's pretty clear they do say in the forecast it's supposed to rain tomorrow so but uh enjoying the sun now because we haven't had a lot of it have we yeah <laughs> all right so if you go down and pull the sandbags back i'll just lift the tarp the plastic right over yep Peppers didn't make it. We didn't get to cut them down in time, but see if anything comes back. There we go. Yeah, that's right now. Look at that. The lettuce looks really good in there. We got some Salanova lettuce growing in there. Looks pretty good. All right, I'll pull these off and just flip this plastic over. Alright, so these aren't as hot down here, but that's okay as far as how they look. They stay warm enough, but they're just not looking that great. Of course, we know the soil isn't as fertile here. Down here looks really good, doesn't it, Sam? Yep. These need to be harvested. So, when was it that we transplanted these over here? Like October, maybe? Maybe. I think it was somewhere around October, November ish, that we put these plants in the ground here. And uh, as you can see, they have survived all this long and uh, even with the, the freezing temperatures uh, it shows you you can still grow things even when the temperatures are freezing if you have certain season extension tools like this very simple tool that we had here with the low tunnels just a few hoops and you can use whatever to make your hoops we just use some masonry wire here took the plastic covered them put sandbags on to hold it down and bam just come out and harvest whenever you want to all right we got some more to take down two more we're just about there in here I have something a little bit different going on. This is an experiment of trying to save some seed from some bok choy, which I really like. And we've gotten, we had gotten a number of cuttings from these, so I'd really like to, to see if we can save some seed from these. So uh, maybe if they can make it until it gets warm, they'll bolt maybe like these, go to seed and we'll have some seed. And these are from heirloom seeds from Baker Creek, and I really, really love this particular bok choy. It's fantastic. Let's try by here. Uh, here we go. Pretty good. Just a slight bitterness to it. There was a couple of days where the temperature got up, and I probably should have came out here and uncovered it, but I didn't. But other than that, it's pretty good. Especially if I add some arugula to it, it really kind of bounce it out with that flavor. I do see a problem right now. We do have some ducks that'll come over here and just mow this down. So, um, so let's go ahead and put the ducks up so we don't lose our greens. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Ducks love greens. And even if you did grow something like this in the low tunnel and say they were just too bitter for you and you didn't want to do it, or eat them, you could just feed it to your chickens or your ducks and it gives them some fresh greens that they're not getting at this time of year. Come on guys. And gal. Actually, we most have gals here. I know I've been letting you up here. It's kind of foraging. But not today, since we opened it up. I may bring you some later, or Sailor May. Well, go on back home. I'll we'll take you in for the day. So, most of the days we let the ducks free range and have their fun time out in the pond. So, we usually keep them put up in the evening to keep them protected inside their electrified fencing and then uh we usually let them out somewhere about lunchtime just so they can get out and forage and, and play keep going keep it going keep it going there you go 
Keep it on going. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Come on, duckies. Out from the pond and into your home. Some of you long time subscribers here may remember that I was on the Justin Road Show at the, uh, during the American, Great American Farm Tour and uh, one of the episodes he had me putting up the ducks. And uh, it's interesting to think back of that a number of years ago is when it happened. And uh, now I'm not the only one putting ducks up, but Sayla is too. Then. She's turning to a duck girl, bringing in the ducks. Good job there, Sayla. <laughs> Feed is one of the keys to getting them to go where you want them to go. Alright, alright. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Decided I'm gonna make a salad for the duck. So, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of chickweed, a little bit of the bok choy, a little bit of the lettuce, and a little bit of kale, a little bit of whatever else is growing. So, uh, let's give it to him. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Yummy, 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 yummy. No matter how big the toad is that you give ducks food in, they're always going to get it out of them. <laughs> they're pretty determined, aren't they? Yep. Believe it or not, ducks are even better foragers and they love greens more than chicken, so they really tear it up for the most part. And, and the Muscovies are always selfish. They'll be and take other people's food and bully them around. Yeah, they are. They can be some big bullies. There's one right there. No, I'm not happy about that. Give it back. Nobody's going to eat it but me. Back up. Back up. The Muscovies have like a hiss sound and all the different quack quack. Those are the khaki camels. They, they, and the they other, don't some quack. of the other ones. They never quack. They never yeah, quack. the Muscovies don't don't quack. The Indian runners don't quack either, do they? Well, they do. They do, but they don't hiss like the Muscovies. No, they don't. 